Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Whatever you like to do, keep to it. Never desert your line of talent. So do what God intended you for, and you will succeed. Remember that. Callers are welcome. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning on a Wednesday, a beautiful day. And a good, good morning to you on this thir- Wednesday. Did I say Thursday a minute ago? If I did, I apologize. Wednesday, August 29th. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of tires. And, of course, don't forget some of our great advertisers, like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you right now we got the right day it's a wednesday august 29th let's go to the phone line and have our pledge of allegiance good morning well good morning sir you the man yes sir i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you wheels by the way wheels turn up that uh, feed line to me just a little bit please if you would and thank you for doing that pledge right now it's time for our weather forecast and it's brought to you by some really good people k and r rental at 256 south 600 west of hayburn on the burley paul highway oh they got there early in the morning this morning at seven o'clock like they do every day for the best of rental of tools and equipment that you need for any construction project yeah all the way from weed mowers to air compressors to clean out your combines you name it they've got it there for both the long and the short term usage so get a hold of them today k and r rental 256 south 600 west of hayburn we'll tell you more in just a moment here's gina with the weather It's going to be another beautiful day as we are into the final week of August, heading into the Labor Day weekend. Beautiful is what we're expecting. Sunny skies, slightly breezy winds out of the east, right around 8 miles an hour, becoming west-southwest by this afternoon, expecting a high of 81 tonight. Beautiful skies, mostly clear, low of 53 tomorrow. Sunny with a high near 82. Winds are going to be picking up tomorrow. Could gust as high as 25 miles an hour. Mostly clear for tomorrow night with a low of 50. By Friday, sunny and 76. Saturday, sunny and 80. Looks like we're going to see 80 degrees for Sunday and also for Labor Day Monday. That's your weather forecast for Zep at the Ranch. Uh, thank you, Gina, and brought to everybody out there in Radio Land by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Right there, you couldn't miss them if you wanted to. Very plain to see on the Burley Paul Highway. And the number to call, Roger and the crew, 678-3122. Get a hold of them today. Wow, we have got some excellent guests this morning. I mean, I'm talking about Dave Beagle back in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm talking about Idaho Senator... uh, (laughs) It's going to be one of those kind of days. Idaho Senator Kelly Anthon is coming on at 9.30. And then Dr. Warren Farrell at 10.06. And another doctor, Dr. Gerard Lomero, my buddy, back in the East Coast at 10.30. So we've got a full plate today. Thank you very much. 
Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call, 678-0459. They get there early in the morning at 730 to start serving you until 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. All your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. That's not brag, that's a fact. They've been in business for almost six decades serving you, and I mean serving you. When you got a problem, they take care of it. I really appreciate them. Ramsey Heating and Electric for warm winters and cool summers, and they're located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. One more thing, uh, I want to say thank you to Denny's Restaurant. They have been so good to us and uh, Zeb's Lunch Bunch. It's really a great home over there. Once a month to meet with our Zeb's Lunch Bunch at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. And they have another one, too, a location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Pick up the menu, and whether you're there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, anytime all the time. The menu choices are fantastic. I'm still bragging about that pot roast sandwich I had the other day. It was delicious. You're going to love the food at America's Diner. Denny's Restaurant, you stop in and see them today. I want to issue um, a little word of uh, get well. Hope everything goes well because he's a dear friend, and that's Jerry Zollinger. I understand that Jerry... A little bit under the weather this morning, and I just want to say God's blessings to you and our prayers. So, Jerry Zollinger, hang tough, my friend, and uh, get vertical and upright and doing everything just right in just a little bit. A uh, good guy, Jerry Zollinger. Um, also, let's see what we have cooking here. Um, I can't believe this. What can I say? You have worked hard and long all your life, so have I, to pay for all of our bills, our mortgages, our car payments, pickup payments, send the kids to school, and pay for health and medical insurance. Hasn't been easy, but we hung in there. We maybe took on more than one job. Possibly had the wife help out and get a job. And we worked hard to spend time with our kids and do things with our kids, pay the bills, and hopefully not have a catastrophic medical problem or health problem. But we paid for the insurance just to have as a safety valve. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that we scrimped and saved and we robbed Peter to pay Paul for to have protection for our families and ourselves. And we can hold our heads up high and with pride that we paid the bills, we raised our families, and we did all we could. Now... The worthless Democrats, and they are. Somebody took offense at this the other day and left a snide little message on my cell phone. How can I call them anything else as worthless Democrats when they want to give away, give away to all illegal aliens coming into the state of California, and you know that this cancer idea will spread across the United States. They want to give illegal aliens free health insurance. I am so mad about listening to these stories and listening to these idiotic congressional and senatorial people in California that I just about put one of my fists through the wall. This is unbelievably stupid. Governor Hopeful, and I hope not, liberal lefty Gavin Newsom, former mayor of San Francisco that turned that city into a cesspool, wants to provide health insurance to all illegals coming into this country. Come on, come all, we'll cover it for you. 
This is really personal to me. It really is. I've had a lot of health problems in my life. I'm not crying the blues. That's the way it was supposed to be, I guess. We've paid our own way. And to just give it to someone that isn't working for it and is not here as a citizen and is here illegally, it drives me nuts. What are your thoughts? Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Caller, I'll be right with you. want to remind everybody about Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, the best. I don't make any bones about it when I say that because I know they are. Uh, Nick Greenwell, physical therapist, and the rest of his great staff, they can help you get back to being you. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, the number to call for the best of exercise programs and of course also using that hydrotherapy pool 678-1191 that number again 678-1191 the best burley physical therapy and rehabilitation you get a hold of them today caller good morning you're on the air good morning you said to call right away and so here i am i know you are go ahead please okay this governor candidate for california I call him Gruesome Newsome, and that's what he's doing to California. He is tearing it apart. Can you imagine that? Now, I have a son who is a really good mechanic, and he worked for a dealership here in Burley. But the best insurance he can get is $13,000 deductible for each family member per year. 13000 And then this guy in California wants his people to put in these illegal immigrants that don't have to... No, call them what they are. I don't mince words on this program, nor will I allow my callers. They are illegal aliens that have entered this country illegally. They are illegal and to give them free health insurance after I've worked all my life and you have too, and your son is paying as much as he can to make sure that he covers himself and his family, it's absolutely a crime. Yeah, and I don't even know how much his premium is. That's the thing. You know, the average working person that's trying to get ahead in this world you just can't get it done well, if you got deductibles like that. No, you can't. And yet your son is trying. And we're all trying, or have tried, and we've we've weathered the storm and came out of it. But I am sick and tired of this tin cup attitude to where those that want to come in and break the law in this country and come in here illegally, they're going to get the freebies. They're going to get the coverage that I have struggled to pay all my life. Am I going to weaken on this? No. Am I going to change the terminology from illegal aliens? No, never. Because I'm going to call it what it is. You know what the percentage of them in California of Hispanic? I understand it's close to 50%. I don't care about percentages of races. Chance of winning the governorship. I, I know, but I don't care about percentages of races. All I'm saying is lumped together. Why in the world should the and you know as well as I do, Keith Cottom, that this is going to spread. It's going to spread to cities like Chicago. It's going to be with the idiots like Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York City. It's going to spread. Oh, we got to help these people. We've got to give it to them free. No! It's like this guy that's a gubernatorial candidate in Florida. He is a black person, but he's got Bernie Sanders to back him now, and here comes all the free stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I, boy, this country, I, I just don't know where we're headed. I just cannot understand, and, and Wheels, we got feedback on the line here. Ride the game, please. Uh, I cannot understand, Keith, why the American people aren't standing up and just absolutely shaking their fist in the air 
or underneath the chin of a politician and saying, wake up, little Susie or little Jimmy, our uh, politicians, because we, the public, are telling you no, no more of this garbage. Yeah, but we're doing it silently. Yes. We're not getting the word out what we really want. I'm not silent. I'm never going to be silent until I pull the plug or somebody else pulls the plug on this program. And you know I am not going to back off on this. No, but the average person here in Idaho says, oh, I'm going to vote yeah, and everything, and I hope everything turns out okay. Uh, that's a good answer, but it don't get much done. You know, I just do not understand, and for those out there that are offended by this, good. You need to be. There is no excuse for not going and voting. There is no excuse for not letting your voice be heard. I mean, oh, well, my dog got sick and ate some grass, or my kitty cat missed the litter box and I had to clean it up. Don't give me that kind of garbage. Go vote. Well, just like an awful lot of people in Idaho says, you know, we really don't amount to anything. Oh, They're brother. They're really going to listen to us, so why yeah. not vote? And, and it's disgraceful. Those kind of people will sit at the coffee shop and almost brag, almost brag that they didn't go vote, and yet they call themselves Americans. How disgusting. Keith, i got to run. Thank you very much. I do mean I thank you for your call. Thank you. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank Thanks a lot. Listening. You're welcome. Uh, don't forget, every Monday we give away a dozen cookies to Sophie's Chatterbox over in Rupert, right on the square at 530 E Street. Oh, what a bakery. <laughs> Pies and cookies and wedding cakes and cakes and biscuits and muffins. And oh, my goodness. And then they've got a great restaurant, too. All of this at Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 E Street in Rupert. On Mondays, you be listening. Listening. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I also want to tell you a good word about our friends at Stoats Equipment Company, your John Deere dealer. I have never, never, never been more impressed than I have been with those great folks. I mean, uh, Curtis and Jake and Vic and all the people over there, wonderful folks. Service, service, service. Those are the three words that they live around. Service, service, service. And they're located at 119 Overland and Burley. They do make your life easier. Stoats Equipment Company, your John Deere dealer. Thank you very much. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Okay, okay, now, I broke the ice on the story about illegals getting free health insurance. But this is what raised my blood pressure to really abnormal highs this morning. A gentleman, and I use the term loosely, Senator of California, Ricardo Lara, authored a bill that without full legal status, illegal aliens could serve in some appointed offices under a bill that is going to be sent to Governor Jerry Brown on Friday. Mull it over. Illegal aliens, according to this law or this bill, it passed the Senate in California 26 to 11. And it would allow people who are over 18 years of age, but, according to their words, lack authorization to live in this country... But they could be appointed and voted into various boards and commissions, which are going to rule and regulate citizens. I'm going to see, just be blunt. Put your hands over your kids' ears. We're going to hell. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous that we're giving away our American regulations, freedoms, and laws 
trashing them, to basically have an open door policy. Hey, y'all, come on in. Hey, we're going to give you free health insurance. Oh, you want to run for commissioner? Well, go ahead. We we don't care about our citizens. This is insane. And I'll tell you, I'm surprised the phone lines aren't just absolutely flooded by people calling and saying, no, we can't let this happen. <sighs> Call me, 436-2244, 1-866-927-4587. I'd love to hear from you. Boy, would I love to hear from you. What is going on? What honestly is going on? Don't we care anymore about America? America and its citizens and our men and women that have fought in the military. All these many wars, all these many conflicts to preserve what America stands for. And then we've got these goofy, absolutely nuts politicians that are giving it away. And they're even considered to be reelected. Oh, call me please, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Good morning, caller, you're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. I know you're who's in control of our country now. Uh, do we have a bunch of foreigners in control of our country? Or uh, what the hell are our uh, senators and congressmen doing that are le- took an oath to protect this country? What are they doing? Nothing. Their yeah, they're doing nothing. Uh, many, many, many senators and congressmen are destroying this country, whether they're state representatives or state senators or nationally uh, senators or congressmen. They are destroying this country in the fabric of what America is. They are destroying it. Oh, yeah, they're, they're like a cancer right now. You you got so many of these people, like this uh, new shining star, Cortez, that's in a position now, uh, the Democratic Party, to go along with this guy from California. Pretty soon this is going to be happening in every state in in our country. And sooner or later, the American voters are going to be voted out of office, and we will no no longer have a constitution or anything else to live by. You know, Tony, I don't know if you heard this or not, and I hesitate to even mention this on the radio this morning, because it is absolutely so disgusting. But the city of San Francisco has had to hire special crews that wear hazmat outfits... And they go to work every day filling bags of human feces off the streets of San Francisco. Is this what our country is coming to? Yes, it is. Uh, What's happening here in Twin Falls, I've already been through over 50 years ago back east. I see it happening here every day. I I just... the uh, Twin Falls have been declared a uh, welcoming community. Okay, buddy. Yeah. You're going to pay the price somewhere down the line. Well, not all. Not all of the Twin Falls City Council is Looney Tunes. There's just a handful, but that handful, unfortunately, seems to be in control. But when you look at the... It's a system here. Pardon me? It's a good old boy system here in Twin Falls. Yeah. It's in control. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Tony, uh, when you hear stories about illegal aliens that are not citizens of this country being allowed to be voted on and put into offices or given free health insurance after you, Tony Salerno, and me, Zeb Bell, and everybody else has had to work hard, scrimp hard, and pay for our own, this is absolutely, I, I can't even think of words that describe my thoughts. Well, how can they, how can a city possibly hire undocumented insurgents here? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just do not understand how we can have any validity to our laws and regulations when we're breaking all the laws and regulations. I don't know, Zeb. Uh, if the people don't join forces to get rid of the Republicans that are sitting on their belts up there in Washington, D.C., 
There's got to be a, a way to get rid of these people that aren't producing anything that's going to mean something to the United States. I agree. Tony, I'm as frustrated or more so than you are. I'm just absolutely... These stories this morning, uh, I just wanted to punch a hole in the wall. It's absolutely ludicrous. Thank you so much, my friend. i got another call waiting. Thank you. Okay, bud. Thank you. All right. Thank you much. Caller, I'll be right there. I got to calm down. Blood pressure on the rise. Barry Equipment and Rental, don't forget sales, service, and parts. And they've got three great locations serving you here in the state of Idaho. And we're going to have Juan on the program tomorrow, as a matter of fact, from the 159 West Highway 30 location. And, of course, Eli heads up the 465 Addison Avenue West location and Twin and the Nampa location. I am telling you, they've got all the equipment. I mean, they've got the all the Doosan equipment. They've got all the Bobcat excavators. They've got everything. Everything. I don't, if you got a weekend job coming up, you better get in there. And if you don't know how to run the equipment, they will teach you in the big sandbox they have right out behind. I'm telling you, the best. Barry Equipment and Rental. Sales, service, and parts. Burley, Twin Falls, and Nampa. Barry Equipment and Rental. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. If you don't calm down, you have to blow a gas up there. But anyway. You know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute wait Joe. Joe. I don't mind blowing a gasket. You or anyone else cannot tell me there's any sanity left in this country when we're letting this happen and we're not speaking out. You're absolutely right. Well, anyway, we're going to have uh, roast beef and uh, the cherry cobbler we were going to have yesterday, we're going to have today. Uh Oh. And come one, come all. So they moved the yummy cherry cobbler ahead 24 hours. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, we're going to have a good one today. And uh, anybody wants a, a takeout, I just call in and they'll have it ready for you at 12. We serve from 12 to 1. Okay. So we need your need your participation. All right, Joe, the yummy man, Taylor. God bless you over at the Senior Junction. Thanks, Joe. We appreciate you. Thanks much. Appreciate you. Bye. All right. Take All care. Right, take care. I tell you, why aren't more people calling and voicing their opinion? You know, we always, you always say, well, that's in California, or that's in Chicago, Illinois. Or that's with uh, old Big Bird de Blasio back in New York City. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When these ideas start going out in state-by-state areas, pretty soon that cancer starts to grow. And it could happen here. i, I got to tell you something else that's really eating on me this morning. We're going to talk about uh, when Dr. Warren Farrell's on the program later on this morning. Did you hear what Florida State University did? They started to have stress classes for their students. <gasps> oh, I can't take it. Why, it's too hard to study. And people are saying, oh, I'm so stressed out. Well, then don't go to college. For heaven's sakes, it hasn't changed. Not since my day. And don't laugh and say, well, that's when they circled the wagons at night. Yeah, we had stress, much of which I created on my own. But we had stress, maybe studying for a psychology exam or a math exam or a uh, history exam. We had stress. But these kids today are a bunch of wussies. They offer this class, the stress class, but listen to this. This is the funny part of the whole story. But if you're so stressed out and can't attend the stress class, the college is giving you an out. They say, well, we're not going to grade you A through F or anything. We're just going to let you slip. If you can't attend the stress class because you're too stressed out, wow, you really have a problem. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Zeb. Um, well, yeah, it's good to get up and just stretch. Because you get up in the morning, kind of wake up some of those muscles and things that have been sleeping. But you you hit on a key point there about 
creeping socialism and this stuff. This country is becoming so much more divided all the time. Look at a Bernie Sanders socialist uh, winning in Florida in the Democratic primary. I mean, this guy, of course, he only got, what, 34% of the vote. I guess it must have been a three-way race, much like Idaho. But uh, I don't know who the third other candidate was, but they never even mentioned who that was. Yeah. But, you know, this is what's going to happen here in Idaho, is happening in Idaho. And if we, I hear rumors that, you know, they want to bring in, people don't like little, even in the Republican Party for some reason. And then they say, well, I guess if we elect Paulette Jordan for just a, one, she'll just do one term, and we'll find out who the real conservatives are, and so forth. I, in this kind of thinking, I mean, let's you know, give them, a, give them an inch, and they'll take a mile. I agree. As you know. I agree. Let me jump in here and say something to you, and the connection's not real good this morning, but I am a fan of Brad Little. I have been a friend and a fan of his for many, many years. I want Brad Little to be governor. I don't hide anything. I'm going to tell you what's up my sleeve, and it's not an ace. It's uh, the name of Brad Little. I want him to be governor. I do not in any way, shape, or form want Paulette Jordan to become the governor. I don't think she's qualified, and I think there's going to be a lot of influence on her campaign and if she ever wins, that would be very negative and very left and liberal. I can't be any more blunt than that. Well, I talked to one of our legislators here in the Valley in the last couple of days, and he said if she is elected, the legislature, basically, they might as well just cancel the legislature um, because nothing is going to get it. The conservative bills that come through, she's not. she's going to veto and um, are not signed, and so uh, the legislature will basically uh, be wasting their time. We might as well leave them stay at home. I, I can't argue that at all. And I think that's exactly right. But what gets me is that, you know, these... Uh, I think what really points out this election is that our education system is has got so much propaganda about how socialism is so... That's the, the wave of the future. And I'm thinking, let's take a look at Venezuela. Let's take a look at you and Russia. I mean, these failed socialist states where the people have uh, don't even have basic uh, supplies of food and uh, sanitation, toilet paper included. So I don't know if you grew up where we didn't have a lot of toilet paper, but that Sears and Roebuck and Montgomery Ward catalog were used a lot. Well, I tell you what, uh, I'm proud of my upbringing. I'm proud of how hard my parents worked to pay the bills and be productive citizens. And I don't believe in just giving things away. Uh, I've got to run, Adrian. I appreciate it. i got another spot to get in here. But thank you, and God bless you for your call this morning. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, we've got to fight, and don't let Paul at Jordan. She's a, she's a Bernie Sanders socialist, and she would be done, uh, absolutely poisoned. The state of well, and she's not the only one, too. I'm also looking at other Democrats that I look with a skull and crossbones on the front of the bottle. Thank you. Well, and Deborah Silvers also, you realize she's a big plan, Parenthood uh, uh, supporter here uh, running against Linda uh, uh, Hartkin. No, she, no, no. Uh, you know. No, you're wrong. You're wrong there. Adrian. Adrian, listen to me for a minute. Listen to me for a minute. You said that uh, she was running against Harkin. No, she's running against Lee Hyder. No, um, no, 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 no. no. Lee, Lee Hyder. Uh, no, that's. I thought that too, but it's not true. Uh, sure is. Was running against uh, Linda. Um, anyway, uh, so Harkin. Well, we better check the records on that a little bit, and I'll check it out later on this morning. Thank you very much for your call. i got to run. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's not forget, of course, our... Uh, that's Thank you very much.
Okay, Wheels, thank you. I've got to get this in here. I'm running late. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 30th Annual Production Sale, September 8th. Don't forget, preview at 10 o'clock in the morning, sale at 11, and that's located at 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley. Absolutely top-notch horses. Confirmation and uh, disposition and performance, absolutely the best of horses that know. They've been raised in the rocks, and they know where to put their feet, let me tell you. Great horses. And for more information, contact uh, Linda at 862-3818 or Jerry at 670-3833. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch. Big sale coming up on September the 8th. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, Zeb, this is Ross. Matt. I was just listening to that other previous caller and that. He needs to kind of maybe shut his mouth a little bit and let you kind of get a little bit of work inside, too, because I think he was really off the wall. But I will hang up with that, okay? No, you don't have to hang up. I appreciate your call, everybody. I want opinions on this program, but I I don't want to to the extent that we ramble and we can't kind of share ideas a little bit. And I appreciate your thoughts. I really do. Thank you. Well, I understand that, too, Zeb. Uh, you know, people need to kind of take time to listen to the other sides. And uh, I'm definitely on your side, but some of these other people are uh, interesting. Let's put it that way. So I will hang up, and thank you, Zeb. No, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to talk about another subject that absolutely scares me, and it's the Democratic National Committee. And they have said they're going to go gender neutral. What does that mean? Well, it means that on behalf of their party, evidently, and their platform, if there is one, they're not going to have anything in regards to male or female. Now, again, when I heard this last night, I stopped, sat back in the lazy boy, scratched my head, and thought, okay, Let's go back in time to my high school biology class, and he was a good friend and a good teacher, Mr. Sponham. Now, if Mr. Sponham is alive today, which I doubt seriously, I believe he would be laughing one second and pounding his fist at the absolute uh, idiocy of this. Regarding the absolute stupidity of no gender? You talk about slapping God and slapping science in the face. No genders. No, there is no male and female. There's no gender. What kind... What are we telling our kids... How are we teaching them? No gender. I'm a male. My wife is female. There is no distortion of the facts. There is no erasing of those facts. And God does not make mistakes. And science goes right along yes there is a male and a female but for the democratic party evidently there isn't Ah. caller good morning you're on the air i'll tell you what zeb the thing of it is is like i said yesterday or the day before parenting is a lost art and uh it's not a popularity contest and, uh, you know, we end up with, you know, children that are dysfunctional victims who can't get the job done. Every day I talk to people about how the young people of today cannot go out and actually work. They don't yeah. know how to work. They don't want to work. Yep. They are afraid to work. They're, they, they don't even want to come out of the house. And, uh, you know, it's summer still. And uh, there was, you know, it was a nice summer. We could have, they could have learned something and enjoyed themselves. But we've just so catered to their weakness. And and they have to feel like there's something wrong with them one way or another. 
You know, I sat here and I listened to you, and I totally agree with what you said, but I, I'm, I'm this way. I really feel this way. I'm a grandparent. My kids are grown. They have their own kids. But, Randy, I honestly think it's time for parents to stand up and be parents, not try to be friends to their kids, and quite frankly, take that smartphone Take that computer and not throw it away, but say you're limited on time. These are the rules. You don't abide by the rules, and then I will throw it away. And then when it's nice, lock the dadgum door and keep them outside. Let them learn about nature. Let them learn about maybe getting a scrape on the knee from falling off the bike or getting hit underneath the chin with a hard ball playing a baseball game. Let them establish themselves as knowing what's going on in the world instead of being reclusive playing on a doggone silly computer all the time. Or uh, it's just... They, they they know nothing and they think they know everything. And they, you know, our society is so overtaken by this LGBTQ, and they're they're, they're less than two percent. Like I've said in the past, I asked my, I have a granddaughter. She's four point She's in the nursing program at ISU. She is as sharp as a tack. She's a good, she's a good girl. And I says, how many, you know, how many gays and lesbians are in America? What percentage? And she said, 50, 25, whatever it was she said. And I says, no, less than two. I says, see, we think there's so many of them that somehow we've got to cater to them. They're miserable. They're Not- misery be- the misery loves company. And they want us to know it every day. I agree with your comment. Randy, thank you. I've got another call, and i got a weather forecast. And I also have a clock that's telling me to go with the program. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, caller, I'm going to ask your uh, indulgence. Just please sit there for 60 seconds. I'll be right with you, I promise. Uh, I want to give everybody a weather forecast real quick. Sponsored by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they are located right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room, the number to call for an appointment, and I urge you to do this for a hearing screening, 312-0957. And don't forget about this wonderful new book that Dr. Christine Pickup has written called Communication Tips for Happier Relationships. Excellent. All of this and more over with our friends at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. Here is the weather. It's going to be another beautiful day as we are into the final week of August, heading into the Labor Day weekend. Beautiful is what we're expecting. Sunny sky, slightly breezy winds out of the east, right around 8 miles an hour, becoming west-southwest by this afternoon, expecting a high of 81 tonight. Beautiful skies, mostly clear, low of 53 tomorrow. Sunny with a high near 82. Winds are going to be picking up tomorrow. Could gust as high as 25 miles an hour. Mostly clear for tomorrow night with a low of 50. By Friday, sunny and 76. Saturday, sunny and 80. Looks like we're going to see 80 degrees for Sunday and also for Labor Day Monday. That's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. And thank you very much. I appreciate it, uh, Gina. Excellent job. And brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And again, the number to call for a hearing screening, it doesn't hurt. And they can help your hearing for better hearing health. Dr. Pickup and Dr. Mitchell, 312-0957. Caller, you have been so patient. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Yes, a good word from Dr. Pickup. You know, I have an appointment today at 11 o'clock to go see her to have my new hearing aids adjusted. She is so caring and everything about the way you can hear. Well, that was that. that was nice. I appreciate that. Uh, what else did you call back now for? I want to tell you. Now, what I want to tell you is this gender-neutral business is not for real. It just cannot be. Women are women, and men are men. For instance, women care about their appearance tremendously. I'm talking about the majority of them. And they always want to look their best. They don't want to go to the store wearing curlers in their hair and stuff like that. Well, on the other hand, men are not so conscious about fashion and that sort of thing. And that there alone is a 
big difference between men and women. Well, it, it, it's such a phony movement, and I mean absolutely phony, to think that we are disavowing and disregarding and alienating through stupidity the actual genders of male and female. I mean, you got to be, you got to have your head in a vice, and nothing's coming out to think that stupidity. Yeah, but you know, over the years, uh, many people have thought of women as airheads. You know, no, not, no, 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 knowing no. what they're talking about and everything. That's yeah. simply not. I don't even want to get into that. Don't go into that aspect of it, Keith. I mean, we're talking about genders, male and female. And there is absolutely no mistakes made by God, our creator in heaven. And science backs it up. We have males and female. Pick up a book and read it, audience. It's called OG. You might introduce yourself to it. The Bible. Well, let me tell you something about females. Oh, brother. Is they study things. They're deep thinkers, and they're, in many cases, more rational than men. Do you agree? What do you expect me to say, Cottom? <laughs> well, how close is your wife to you right now? Less than eight feet. Thank you for the admonishment. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to you later. Well, you better love her and... Be grateful that you've got a winner. I do. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I just don't understand why we can't get back to one basic thing in our society. Now, I dare somebody to argue with me on this. I welcome somebody to argue with me on this. And that one basic thing is common sense. Common sense. There is a right there is a wrong. There is a left and there is a right. There are color schematics and there are proof, there is proof of everything that's going on in our society, male and female. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, sir. Would you please help me because I am so sick up of the sick of the idiocy that's going on in our society. I need you to come in and calm me down. Well, you answer, and I, I'll wait, I won't hold my breath, but when has a Democrat listened to facts? Uh, and it is a fact. Yeah, we'll talk fast because I'm turning blue. <laughs> yeah, there's two genders, and that's a fact, but when have they listened to facts? This is a party that booed God. Yeah. yeah. This is a party that's turned their back on God. This is a party of evil, and you've got to destroy society to take it over, well, it, and this is what they're trying to do. Okay, well, that brings me right back to what I said a moment ago. We need to restore common sense. Well, if it was common sense, everybody would have some. Yeah. I mean, most people don't have common sense. A lot of them have book learning. But zero common sense. Well, it was just like this idiotic story I read the other day on the air about, oh, now the LGBT is backing that, uh, no, there will be no more mommies and daddies. It's going to be gender neutral. And they don't want their children to grow up and look at mommy and call her mommy. And they don't want to look at daddy and call him daddy because that, that just must put too much stress on the, on the child. Right. Yeah, and they're saying that don't change the children's diaper till they ask you to change it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, on the box it says up to seven pounds. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if you really get down to the brass tacks, this Democrat and liberalism and all these people are wanting this to go on, it is a mental disorder. I can't argue that. problem mentally coping with the way with reality. Well, and you, look, it won't stop right there. There are those, and I've got to do a commercial here real quick, but there are those, Doug, and give me a short answer on this. There are those that say, well, you don't respect these people. No, I don't respect something that is Looney Tunes and absolutely not real. Exactly. You, you can think what you want. You can do what you want. 
And if that's how you feel and that's what you think, that's fine. It don't bother me a bit. But when you start cramming it down my throat, that's when I'm going to have a problem with it. I've got to run. I am way over time, buddy. Thank you. Hey, God bless. Let's do what we can for our seniors. All right, Doug. Thank you much. Hey, I want to remind everybody about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. I'm hurrying because I'm late. Yes, I am. I want to tell everybody that if you're getting ready for any kind of a road trip, don't forget to stop into any one of the seven locations. Land, of course, they've got the best in tires. All the tires for your cars, pickups, SUVs, trailers, camp trailers, horse trailers, all the different tread designs. Yes, they have all your tires. The best in brake service and front end alignments and shocks and struts and batteries they really care lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line in twin falls and randy on overland in burley the best your magic valley les schwab tire centers got to run to the news from cbs i'll be back in seven Oh, here we go. Hour number two on a uh, Wednesday, August 29th morning. You know, it is a beautiful day outside. And uh, weather on the East Coast, real, real warm, hot and humid. And uh, out here in the West, not too shabby. And even snow up in Montana. My, my, my. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serve you and of course don't forget to burley physical therapy and rehabilitation at 1263 bennett avenue suite 2 in burley helping you get back to being you wow okay we've got a lot of things on our plate we've got a guest waiting in the wings we're going to get right to him right after wheels has this word for western way services from the canyons of the snake river Western Way Services, and I urge you to call them and get on the route service. We've been on their route service where they come by once a week, pick up the garbage, and they are excellent. I really, really mean that. Uh, All you have to do, it's easy. Call the number, 734-6969, because they are always at your disposal. Please call them today. Western Way Services, serving you at 734-6969. Uh, on Thursdays tomorrow at 917, of course, our friends at Casha Regional Hospital are on the air, and we get a chance to meet a lot of the people that are dedicated medical experts serving you at Casha Regional Hospital. I am really impressed with uh, all the friends and the neighbors that are working for you to provide quality care close to home at Casha Regional Hospital, and we'll be listening for more of those great people tomorrow at 917. I want to also urge you folks uh, to remember our good friend Anthony. My goodness, Anthony and Save on Shells. I bought a brand new shell for my pickup. It's an ARE shell that I went through Anthony at Save on Shells at 1027 Overland and Burley. I have been, oh my goodness, overwhelmed with the great service that he provides. I mean, you go in there and wim bam boom, he's got everything on your pickup and uh, any problems at all, he'll take care of it this man and his company they can custom fit any camper shell to any truck on the road there you go give them a call or stop in and the number 312-1525 anthony at save on shells 1027 overland in burley right now my friend dave bego indianapolis indiana how are you I'm doing fine, Zeb. How are you doing? Well, good. Uh, what's the weather like in your neck of the woods? Kind of a nice, calm, easy Indian summer. What's going on back there? Well, no, we've been very hot the last. Uh, we've been in the 90s the last several days, but 
we got some rain this morning, and we got a big uh, front coming through this afternoon. So we're supposed to get up to another inch of rain this afternoon. Oh my goodness oh, sakes! Mid eighties. So, well, I wanted to ask you. I want to ask you about uh, various things that are going on in the news, and I apologize, I walked on you there. We got a little feedback problem here. Wheels, uh, if you would control that. Um, the NFL players, I. I honestly hate to keep going back to them. I hate to keep talking about ESPN, and they're going to shelter the audience by not playing any of the national anthem or showing any of the despicable uh, athletes that won't stand for our anthem. And the NFL Players Association and the NFL, I thought through Goodell's office, they had some kind of an agreement as to how to handle this thing. And the crybabies at the NFL Players Association said no and this thing's still up in turmoil what are your thoughts well you know the union is going to do what they want to, they think they want to do for the, the uh, players and uh, you know behind the scenes I'm sure that they're after the, um, the NFL and the owners and that to uh, let them do whatever they want you know freedom of speech and all that kind of stuff uh, the baloney that the, uh, the union bosses throw out there and uh, they're going to continue to push this and uh, because uh, the, you know as I've said many, many times, the unions are part of the far left trying to uh, really bring this country down. Absolutely. But where do you draw the line as far as, let's use you as an example. You have your company, and I don't know how many people you employ, but I'm assuming it's a relatively large, large number. But you're the boss, and you have to have rules and regulations and they have to be abided by, or you've got utter chaos. What's the difference between you as an employer there with your business or an owner in the NFL? Well, because the owner is out in front of the media all the time, and uh, you know they're on TV and stuff like that, and they're afraid of uh, saying things or doing things that uh, uh, people may not like, and uh, so... It's easier for them just to go along with the unions and that. And, uh, you know, in my book, The Devil at Our Doorstep, um, uh, I talk about a, um, a, a businessman in Fort Wayne, Indiana, that owns a business that read my first book, The Devil at My Doorstep. And we met, and he says, Dave, uh, I'm all behind you. You did the right things. You had the backbone. You stood up and everything. He says, but I'm going to be honest with you. He says, I couldn't do it. I couldn't put up with the pressure uh, psychologically and mentally that they put on you. I couldn't put up with that. I, I just I couldn't go through all that. And he says, Dave, quite honestly, 95% of the business people in this country couldn't do it. And that's a shame because we need to. I just don't know what's going to happen on this. I said the other day on my program that my feeling is... Uh, I have a great animus against uh, ESPN because they're cowards. They basically won't show or let anyone hear the national anthem, and they think that's going to solve the problem. But my feeling is that whether it's CBS Sports or whether it's Fox News Sports, uh, and they have an opening ceremony with the national anthem, and I see any players taking a knee or sitting down, bang. I'm going to turn it off. Any teams that stand respectfully for our national anthem, I'm going to watch that game. Yeah, and a lot of people are, are doing that. And, uh, you know, the NFL is losing viewership and people going to the games. And uh, uh, But I have to tell you, at the Colts game, this, uh, this preseason game this past week, um, they played San Francisco, you know, and uh, they uh, showed the national anthem. And I have to tell you, this was really tremendous. I, I appreciate the Colts doing this. Uh, they had a flag that was um, as big as the football field. It went from goal line to goal line and from sideline to sideline. And uh, they played it, and all the players on both teams stood up and uh, did the right thing. And Amen. It was great. Amen. I don't know. It's a problem that I, I think is just being exacerbated by the media. And I think uh, ESPN needs to have uh, guilt washed off their hands, too. But uh, there's got to be an answer. And I, my own personal answer is you have to get tough from the top down. In other words, Goodell's office as the commissioner, down to the owners, down to the players, who are still working for a living, playing for a living, and receiving big paychecks, but they have to have rules and regulations to go by. 
Yes, they do, and uh, this is what has to happen. Again, you know, ESPN and the rest of the media, behind the scenes, they're being intimidated by the unions. And, um, you know, as I talk about in my book, The Devil at Our Doorstep, uh, Glenn Beck went after the SEIU, and uh, the SEIU went after Fox's advertisers, and um, Fox started losing revenues, and the SEIU told Fox, get rid of Beck, we'll leave your advertisers alone. Yeah. So they did. And this is the type of thing that's going on every day in this country. I got to ask you about this. Uh, this story really infuriated me this morning and set me off. I have been uh, told by people about two weeks ago that this was coming, and then all of a sudden it goes to fruition that uh, many people in California want to provide free health insurance coverage to illegal aliens. And not only that in the state of California, but there is a bill that is going to be uh, possibly sent to Governor Jerry Brown's office on this Friday that would give illegal aliens the right to serve in various appointed offices and uh, they would have control on the yay or nay of our laws and regulatory means in the state of California, which you know is going to spread like a cancer. What are your thoughts on this? What are we doing? Well, the state of California, you know, it's they're just they're way out in, in nowhere land, but they're controlled by the unions and the far left, and uh, they're bringing these bill things uh, um, to uh, the governor and, and other people there, and uh, because they want these people, um, uh, number one, for votes uh, for the Democratic Party, and number two, they want these people for. Um, the unions uh, eventually see them uh, uh, becoming citizens, and uh, they're going to, um, you know, unionize them. Of course, that means more dues money. So this is this is all about money and votes. Okay. It is, but it's also leading to the demise of families that have worked hard all their lives trying to put bread on the table and send their kids to school and pay the automobile insurance, pay the health insurance, and be responsible citizens. And now illegals that are not citizens of this country are garnering for free what we have worked for all of our lives. Well, that's exactly right. And... uh but it's, you know, that's their philosophy, and they go out and do this stuff, and, uh, you know, social justice, uh, all this stuff, and they uh, uh, say one thing and do another all the time. And as I say many times, people need to watch what they do, not what they say. Absolutely. You know, we have a mess right now, Dave, with the FBI. <laughs> I can remember growing up, and uh, the FBI was uh, up on a pedestal as the number one uh, law enforcement agency. I mean, when you heard the words FBI, or the initials FBI, people cringed in fear of their honesty and their integrity, and they were going to get the bad guys. Now, when you hear some of these stories that are coming out, about the FBI leaking certain stories to the media, and then after the media gets their teeth into it, the FBI getting FISA warrants to go after these people. Dave, I don't know who to believe anymore. Well, I believe that uh, we are recovering from eight years of a president that uh, let uh, bad things go on behind the, the scenes in Washington. And people do whatever they want to do, control the government, and, uh, uh, you know, it's going to take a, take a while to clean the swamp out. And, uh, you know, Trump's working on that, and uh, he's not going to put up with these people, but it's, it's going to be a fight. And uh, my biggest concern is, is that um, the Republican Party keeps a uh, majority in the House and Senate here in this uh, midterm election so that uh, Trump uh, has some support and he doesn't have to worry about uh, Democrats coming after him and trying to impeach him. With that being said, though, my dear friend, the Republicans are not showing and have not shown that they can govern and lead, and they haven't. I mean, they've got the majority, but they're acting like, oh, well, we better not do this. It might make the Democrats mad. Don't you get the same feeling? Oh, there are. There's, there's definitely ones that don't have any backbone, but there's some that have kind of come in that are running this year, and... Uh, like Mike Braun here in Indiana, you know, he's a businessman running for the Senate, and, uh, 
U.S. Senate, and uh, there's there's people like that across the country. And uh, if we can get those type of people in office, I think we'll see a change. I certainly hope so. By the way, uh, I wanted to ask you about this. I heard a story this morning and listened to a report about Florida State University having uh, stress classes for the students, but if a student is too stressed out and can't attend the stress class, they will let them go without uh, hindering their grade. What kind of prima donna wussies are we raising anyway? It's all part of the left's uh, agenda to uh, uh, control our students and get in their minds and, uh, you know, uh, teach them uh, to be liberals and uh, far-left liberals and uh, and help uh, control and bring down this country at some point, and that's what they're all doing. I mean, it's 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 the progressive movement, and, uh, you know, we need... Uh, and there are there are professors out there that do stand up with this, but we need more of them. I agree, we need more of them. But then I also heard this story, and I don't think anything's going to be done with it. I don't think anything's going to come of it. I don't think there's, excuse me, going to be any prosecution, etc. But there are now experts that are claiming that Hillary Clinton's emails for four years as Secretary of State and her communications with the President at that time, Barack Obama, were hacked by the Chinese. Not the Russians, but the Chinese, and nobody in the media is really throwing their hands up in the air and saying anything about it. I know, I know, and in, in, in the media... As ever, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I don't pay attention much to the media anymore because uh, I know that, uh, you know, they they have been brainwashed and being controlled and, uh, um, you know, you can't believe a lot of things they're saying. And you see Trump, he's going he's going after people like Google in that big time like he did uh, yesterday. And uh, it's time that we expose these people for what they are. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've had... Uh, People I know that uh, said that they've been uh, attacked on Facebook and other places, too. And uh, it's time for the American people to stand up and, and have some backbone and not allow these people to try and run our country. Absolutely right. And uh, another subject that I wanted to ask you about this morning is... Uh, the unions, where are they? What are you hearing? I mean, I, I'm a little bit concerned that we're not hearing anything about the SEIU and other powerful unions when we are only literally weeks away from the November elections. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, behind the scenes, they're really uh, pushing hard uh, for the Democratic Party, and uh, they're going after things um, and um, because they know that they've got to the, get the Democratic Party back in um, uh, control of Congress and the Senate so that they can get things um, redone so that they can uh, force unionize people and uh, and uh, increase their dues, you know, their membership and their dues. And um, they're out there doing this. And, um, you know, even the Supreme Court decision with Janice and that, they're telling them that was a poll and that they still have to pay money and their dues money and everything. And uh, But on the other side of it is there's a lot of members out there that have woke up and understand that the unions aren't for them. They're for their own pocketbook, and uh, they're out there actually filing lawsuits against uh, the SEIU and other unions. Uh, I think the SEIU, they've had, uh, they may have to pay like $100 million in back union dues that they wow. took out of people's paychecks. So, uh, but they're out there trying to, and they're out there trying to force unionized people. They're going back to the, uh, um, you know, card check campaigns where they uh, there's no election and stuff like that. So it's... Uh, it's going to continue to uh, be ugly behind the scenes, and they're going after right-to-work states, too. You see uh, uh, Missouri just, um, even though he, they enacted it a year ago or voted in, uh, the unions got it voted down here recently. Let me ask you this, uh, and a lot of people say the union or the SEIU or the AFL-CIO, etc. But really, you, with the past problems you had with the SEIU, we're still talking people. We're still talking human beings. Who are some of these people that are in charge of these unions, and how do they attain their power? Well, they've worked their way up, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, in, in a lot of these, like the SEIU, and they had one come out where uh, uh, one of their um, higher-up executives was just um, um, 
charged with, um, you know, going after uh, some of the members sexually and that, and uh, and they're also um, uh, showing ones that are um, um, uh, doing things about taking people's money and intimidating uh, membership and stuff like this. And uh, um, but uh, they are who they are. They're people that really don't understand how to. Uh, work and be successful in a free market society. They only know how to be successful by taking control and intimidating people. Well, I guess my question is when someone is chosen to be the head of a union or is there a board of directors or whatever, I mean, how do these people attain kind of a stepping stone policy to go all the way to the top? What are the requirements? What's the criteria? They they just go out and they get to uh, find people they want they know that will um, uh, do the same things and, and service their program and and their agenda and they go out and look for those people um, and uh, supposedly the uh, the union people are supposed to get a chance to vote on this but in a lot of cases it doesn't happen even if they do the question is are the results accurate. Wow. And you firsthand have had to deal with these people, and it gets a little scary, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, uh, yeah, and it's not just the SAIU. I mean, it's, it's other, other ones, too. And uh, all of the unions, uh, their, um, you know, their membership continues to drop, and uh, they're, continue, they're, they're all just uh, frantically worried about uh, eventually uh, not being here anymore, and that's why they're doing these things. Okay. We are just a matter of days away from the start of the football season. You mentioned the Indianapolis Colts here a little bit ago. Uh, Your quarterback seems to be extremely accident and injury prone. Any predictions as to who's going to have the better season? You with the Colts or me with the Packers? Well, you know, I'm a Packers fan, too. I... uh... I don't know. It's. Uh, I think we both got some problems, but I watched him the other night, and uh, he did a pretty good job. And uh, uh, we do have a fairly good backup too. And uh, so, uh, the Colts need uh, Colts need a better offensive line. Now that's the big key right now. So we'll see where they go. But they came back and won the other night, and uh, so we'll see where they go. They're two and one in preseason. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm figuring out a way that I can have my lovely wife kind of co-mingle and co-sew the Colts jersey that you sent me along with my Green Bay jersey so that we can still remain friends. There you go. Sounds good. Dave, I appreciate you being on the program every Wednesday. Dave Vico, an author, great businessman. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Well, thanks, and have a good week, okay? All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Good guy. Dave Bego, uh, back in Indianapolis, Indiana, and boy, he knows the unions, the labor unions, etc., and the problems that they caused him and his business over the many years. I uh, want to remind you, too, about our friends at Ark Animal Hospital. Oh, these are good, good people. Dr. Bill, Dr. Jordan, and the whole crew. And again, the rivers and canals are going down to lower levels. And they're leaving a reddish green blue algae on the banks, and this is deadly. This is deadly for dogs. That algae can kill your dogs within a half an hour, or they will become extremely sick. I urge you to really watch your pets, and at the first sign of anything not right, please get them in immediately to Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street, near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. And believe me, they are a mixed animal practice, meaning large or small. They do serve them all. Call them at 6 Seven eight one one seven seven. They have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Uh, I want to remind you, in just a few minutes, we're going to have Idaho Senator Kelly Anthon on our program, and uh, we're going to be discussing kind of a potpourri of what's going on in the state of Idaho. And I also want to remind you, tomorrow, uh, we've got a kind of a potpourri of everything, including uh, Cache County School Days. Don't forget that. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later on. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our dear friend Joel Heward his family, and his staff, serving you and your family. And when there's the passing of a loved one, they are always there to provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort, always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. 
I urge you to call them and find out more about the pre-planning of funerals, 436-5636. And that's Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, his family, and his staff. And Joel Heward also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Wow, a lot of things going on. Now, when I make a mistake and misspeak, I'm going to apologize for it because I did. I did. And I want to apologize to uh, Adrian Arp a little bit ago when I made the mistake and I, I said this and I'm wrong. I'm not above correcting myself or going to the whipping post. And when I said that uh, Deborah Silver was going to be running against Senator Lee Hyder, she is not. She is running against uh, Linda Hartkin. And I wanted to correct that. I don't know why I jumped in and said that against uh, my friend Adrian Arp. But Adrian, if you're still listening, we both had a misconception for quite some time on this, and I apologize to you, and I want to say that over the air. And uh, I'm not perfect, at least my wife knows that. And I wanted to make an apology for that mistake I said on the air with you. Thank you very much. Um, We also want to acknowledge our good friends at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. And Jeff and the whole crew, I believe, what did I hear? Jeff's out of town. He's going to be back any day now. But the whole crew, they're serving you for all your comfy furniture and, of course, the best of carpeting and everything. These people really know about taking care of the beautification and the comfort of your home, whether it's the carpet or whether it's the flooring or whether it's the uh, mattress sets, the bedroom sets and the living room furniture or all the recliners, everything in there to serve you absolutely and make your life a lot more comfortable. Our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland in Burley, I urge you to stop in and see them today. They are the best at what they do. Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Really good people. Uh, Real quick, and then we'll go to the phone line. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. What can I say? I mean, they helped us get started with four-wheelers about, um, what, eight years ago now? My goodness. And they're located at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And uh, they've got a big big blowout going on uh, watercraft right now and of course you know they've got all the four by fours and they've got the maverick sport side by side Ooh, ooh. great service department to keep you running and all the accessories at let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world where the fun is sold good morning senator kelly anthon how are you well good zeb thanks for having me on today you know um there's so much going on in politics, and I made a mistake a little bit earlier, and I apologize for that, in uh, some of the races that are coming up, uh, going into November, etc. But uh, I wanted you to come on the program this morning and kind of give us a little potpourri as to what a senator does in his off time away from the legislature and some of the big issues that you're planning on addressing. Well, thanks, Zeb. No, and I, I think, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on in politics today, and it is hard to keep track of, to be quite honest with you. Um, and, Zeb, you may know that one of the jobs I have at the state Senate is uh, the, I'm the majority caucus chair. And what I do there is I'm really supposed to be keeping track of politics really, really closely. And I'm here to tell you what you just said is true. It's hard to keep track of all this stuff. Uh, but to answer your question, Zeb, you know, that's the thing about uh, if you're – if you're really after it in the state legislature, there's not a lot of time off. And so, you, you know, you're working all through the interim on things that are important to you and things that are important to your constituents. There are a lot of study groups that go on. They call them interim committees. And uh, this year I'm working with uh, the interim committee that's setting registration costs for trucking and the trucking industry. And that, that really is a, a broader question, uh, which is, you know, it's an exploration of how do we pay for the transportation infrastructure needs that we have. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Zeb, you and I have talked about, oh, the Murtaugh Highway. 
I've been very, very keen on trying to get something done for the Asequa Highway in Minidoka County. That, that finally got repaved this year. But, you know, uh, you take a district like mine, which is the Minicaja area. That's District 27, Minidoka and Caja County. And in, in that area, there's plenty of road. And uh, there's about 45,000 people. That's why I have that particular district. You go to Treasure Valley, and you have a much higher concentration of both districts and people. Uh, and those that's districts 10, 10 through 22, so that many districts in that small of an, an area. Wow. And I point that out because as we continue to look at uh, transportation needs and how we will go through a process of distributing money throughout the state to pay for those needs, you realize pretty quick that those of us in the rural area have only one vote in the Senate, such as District 27, and those in the ur- urban areas have many, many, many more votes in that same Senate. And so we've got to be vi- vigilant if we're going to keep on top of our infrastructure needs and, and how that state money is distributed to make sure that those of us in the rural areas uh, are getting those needs um, fixed. So I've been focused there quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, I am paying the c- uh, close attention to politics, Zeb. I'm very, very interested in this year's politics, uh, primarily uh, lately in the governor's race. Right. And I know you visited about this on the radio a bit, but this is an important election for Idaho. Uh, you know, I, I'm a Republican, and those of us in my party had a very robust um, primary election. We had some very good candidates, and uh, we, we fought that out, and uh, Brad Little became our nominee. Um, as a Republican, I would say to my fellow Republicans, let's, let's now get together. Because we're facing a heck of a challenge, I think, in Paulette, Jordan. And uh, I, would, I would challenge your listeners to do some real looking into Paulette um, and really decide if she's good for our community and good for our values and good for Idaho. You know, I was just thinking about it, Zeb. Uh, if you look at that primary election in, the, in, in terms of the Democrat primary election, so she has served in the legislature for four years, Paulette Jordan, she didn't have a single one of her her colleagues in the House or the Senate endorse her. Right. right. Not a single one. Mm-hmm. That, that should say something to the folks that are looking at that. The Democrats did not support her. There's a very interesting thing, Zeb, I don't know if you saw it, but in July, uh, Chris Carlson, who's a lifelong Idaho Democrat, as a matter of fact, he was the press secretary for uh, Governor Andrus. So, I mean, he's a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat, Idaho Democrat, the old-school good folks, Idaho Democrats. And in his July 30th column that he wrote, uh, he's actually, God bless him, he's having some health problems, he's got some cancer, and he's going to stop writing. But in his very last article that I saw on July 30th, he said that uh, he, his advice to Idahoans was to vote for Brad Little. And that he called uh, Paulette Jordan the most unqualified candidate he's seen in years. What is the fascination? He even went so far as to say it was shameful for her to carry the Democrat label. Wow. So this is, this is a different kind of breed of cat. Uh, this is a different kind of, of politician that we're seeing. And if you look, you know, if you look at that primary two, Zeb, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'll ta- stop talking and let you talk here. But if you look at who did endorse her, that's where there's something to see. I mean, it was, it was Hollywood star, you know, it was Cher, it was uh, cable news commentators, it was a Planned Parenthood, yeah. people for Bernie Sanders, and so on and so forth. So let's, let's um, you know, um, I'm not telling you how to vote here. I'm telling the, your listeners to go take a look for yourself. Go see if Paulette Jordan is going to be the right fit for Idaho. I, my position, of course, is that she's not. <laughs> You bring up a really, really good point of discussion there, and and it leads me to ask more uh, about the outside influence that is perpetrating and pushing the concept of Paulette Jordan, or back in New York, like uh, Alexandria Cort- Ocasio-Cortez, etc., or that mayor that is wanting to run for the governorship of Florida, uh, the Bernie Sanders uh, look-alike, sound-alike. Why? Why is the there's such a big push, and I'll use the word, to move socialism to the forefront in this country. Well, and Zeb, maybe your question just answers it itself. But I think um, uh, also to your point, um, Idaho, in, in my experience, has rejected. Idahoans don't like 
this idea of outside money coming into the state to influence the way our, 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 our families work, our businesses work, our society works, our government works. We have traditionally rejected that. Um, this is an election where you're seeing um, that money, particularly on the Democrat side, in my opinion, an observation coming in to influence the election. Um, you know, you do stop and kind of scratch your head and say, why is everybody so interested in Idaho? Uh, but you, you also have to understand that Idaho is leading the nation in many, many ways. And, uh, you know, from an economic standpoint, certainly, uh, from a growth stand, uh, standpoint, certainly, and we're doing it based on the precepts, at least, of, con- of conservative thought, that when you have low taxes, low regulation, predictable government, and on and on and on, that's how you grow your government. And that, in fact, when you have a recession like we just went through, you stay conservative, you don't raise taxes, you try to cut hard on spending, which is what Idaho did. Um, Now, listen, we've got a lot of challenges in Idaho. Um, You know, I've talked about education before. Um, That's a mixed bag, you know. Uh, all those people who are down on Idaho and down on Idaho teachers and down on Idaho schools, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, don't buy into that. But we do have work to do, and, and I think we're doing it. As a matter of fact, Deb, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going into the weeds a little bit on, on education. On education, uh, even the, the liberal uh, student, or I'm sorry, teacher groups, national teacher groups are recognizing Idaho as one of the leaders in the United States right now in increasing teacher pay. So that was something that needed to be done. Uh, I mean, honestly, I just think it's a market deal, but we're moving forward. So, uh, you know, uh, I think that there is a concerted effort to go into these areas that are rural, conservative, and succeeding and try to undo that. I really appreciate your comments regarding education because that's a thorn that still hurts in my side. Whenever I see and or hear some of the advertisements that are put on television or radio condemning all of education in the state of Idaho and basically putting and relegating our students down to a uh, a lower status saying they can never really achieve, they'll never really be able to uh, go forward in their chosen career, they'll never really be able to afford to raise their families. I disagree totally because everybody that I know that went to a small school atmosphere and I'm talking about my son-in-law I'm talking about my son, I'm talking about my daughter I'm talking about many have become doctors and lawyers and huge agribusiness people, etc. I don't like the denigration of our kids being put down at the bottom and, and kind of lumped all in negativity. Well, and Zeb, you're right to feel that way and, and I'll tell you why. Well, first of all, listen, you know I'm biased. I love Idaho. I'm very positive on Idaho, and I always will be. But let me tell you the facts, and this is why you're right to feel the way you do. The facts are that Idaho is now tied sixth in the nation, with Utah, by the way, for the highest year-to-year increase in state funding for your K-12 through schools. Now, that's not something you hear on the TV, and it's not something that many of the politicians... Oh, we lost him. Uh, Wheels, if you could, try to get him back on the air. And I'll tell you what I'll do real quick. I'll get a weather forecast on here while my buddy Wheels is trying to reinsert the phone call. Thank you, sir. Our weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. And, of course, the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, pay payroll services, retirement planning, all of this and so much more, serving you, your family, and your business. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, while we get Kelly back on the line, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be another beautiful day as we are into the final week of August, heading into the Labor Day weekend. Beautiful is what we're expecting. Sunny sky, slightly breezy winds out of the east, right around 8 miles an hour, becoming west-southwest by this afternoon, expecting a high of 81 tonight. Beautiful skies, mostly clear, low of 53 tomorrow. Sunny with a high near 82. Winds are going to be picking up tomorrow. Could gust as high as 25 miles an hour. Mostly clear for tomorrow night with a low of 50. By Friday, sunny and 76. Saturday, sunny and 80. Looks like we're going to see 80 degrees for Sunday and also for Labor Day Monday. 
That's your weather forecast for us up at the ranch. Excellent, Gina. Thank you very much. And brought to you by the people that really know about tax rates and tax changes and new deductions. All of this is going to play a big part in serving you, your family, and your business. Get a hold of them today. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Wheels, did we get uh, Senator Anthon back on the air? We did, sir. All right, thank you. Kelly, all of a sudden the line snapped and it went blank, and I apologize. I don't think we did anything. It was just uh, the phone gremlins. One of those things. Well, I, I, as I was saying, Zeb, you know, as Idahoans, uh, we're not getting the full story sometimes. Uh, we've got work to do in education just like every other state. And, and But the bottom line is that the Down on Idaho kind of campaign is very frustrating, and, yes. and it's not supported by the facts. I don't know if you heard right at the end, I was, I was telling you, Idaho students fifth in the nation for college readiness, right. according to U.S. News and World Report. Right. right. Is that a failure? <laughs> because we're not spending, you know, as much as California? I don't, I don't think so. And so, and I'll tell you the other thing, Zeb, and you and I talked about this, but at the end of the day, when a kid walks through the door, um, there's got to be somebody there saying, where's your homework? Yep. yep. And that's one of the key components to a solid education system. It's why Idaho does well with what we have. Uh, it's why I did well. And uh, hopefully it'll be a major in- influence in my kids doing well in school and being ready for college and or careers or career tech or whatever they decide to do. That was extremely well stated. I would like to go back, if I could, Kelly, just a little bit earlier in our conversation when we were talking about the rural voice. Uh, you were talking about the roads and the highways, et cetera, with the rural voice trying to get the money to help those folks in in those areas. What about the rural voice of Idaho? Is it diminishing? Uh, do people still have the power and the people that are working for them in the legislature? Well, Deb, I, I think that uh, to answer your question, the answer is that our populations are shifting. And that as we've seen redistricting of these legislative districts over time, you're seeing a concentration of districts into urban areas. This is something that's not new to other states as well. I mean, if you look at Nevada, you're going to see a very large concentration of your legislators coming from Las Vegas. No big surprise, right? But um, the great thing about Idaho, I think, so far is even in some of those urban areas, you have legislators at this point with a heritage in ag, in in the rural communities, uh, and a realization that agriculture is the lifeblood of the state's economy. It's the number one um, producer of gross revenues in the state of Idaho, followed by manufacturing, by the way, which is also tied to food production because we're making cheese and we're making other things. Uh, And then interestingly, uh, number three is tourism, which is kind of interesting. But but I, I think that we have to be vigilant. And when I was elected into the state Senate, I absolutely committed my mind that my role in the state Senate was to be a voice for agriculture and a voice for the rural community and that, that lifestyle and those family values. Um, you know, speaking of, of that, Zeb, you know, one of the things I've campaigned on and I, I believe very firmly and I will continue to say is that when I look at legislation... I'm going to ask some questions, but one of the primary questions I'm going to be asking is, is it good for the Idaho family? Is it good for the family? Because if it's not, I don't care how much money it brings into the state. I don't care how, you know, who likes it or who doesn't like it. I'm not going to support it. Uh, and so I think that that's also important for us to ask as we look at candidates. You know, are there value systems? Are there um, their policy uh, points? Are these all things that are going to be good for the families in in our area? And if they're not, that that certainly informs me as to how I'm going to vote. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question for you, Kelly. Quickly, caller, you're on the air. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, Idaho, in some respects, is the last bastion of reality and logical reality because California, Oregon, and Washington, they're. they're we're lo- they've lost themselves. They've lost their souls. Uh, sometimes I wonder what Montana's doing. Uh, Arizona seems to be edging towards the blue. And I tell you what, 
if we don't have leadership in this state that is willing to stand their ground, uh, these Calif- whatever, these people coming in from out of state that want to change us into what they came from, uh, I tell you what, we can't do it because the Phoenix may have to rise from the ashes right here. You know, not that we're the ashes, but from Idaho because... We've got to keep it the way it ought to be. I'll hang up. You know, he brings up some really good points, Kelly, that I think need to be addressed because I'm still uh, scratching my head. We're seeing an economy that is growing in leaps and bounds. We're seeing bigger and better things since this current administration took over. Why would there be a blue wave in November? I can't understand it. Well, I don't, I don't feel like that's going to happen in Idaho, and I, I know there's a lot of hype when it comes to some of these things, especially because of the buildup you try to convince people there's going to be a blue wave. I guess we'll see, but that's not. I, I agree that my my gut is that uh, from the last election to this point, there's a bit of an awakening that's happening in especially rural areas of rural America, where people are saying it's we've had enough. You know, the caller mentioned California, some of these sister states of ours, why, uh, uh, Montana. Montana is doing some things that make you kind of scratch your head, to be honest with you, in, in terms of marijuana. Um, I, I spent some time at the Casual County Fair. As a matter of fact, I spent a lot of time at the Casual County Fair. My kids had sheep, and we were in there a lot. But, but I spent some time in the Republican booth. And what really surprised me were the number of people who stopped by that booth to ask to register to vote who were from California. A large number, a surprising number of people stopped by to say, we just came here from California, we want to vote. Um, I think you're going to see a continued liberalization in California. You're driving businesses out. They're driving out um, dairy. You see that happening to Idaho. Uh, they're, they're following a course of policy that I think is not good for people, it's not good for families, and it's not going to be good for their taxpayers. Absolutely well said. Uh Let's talk a little bit quickly. I've only got about four minutes left, Kelly, but let's talk in the time remaining about the importance, and I underline the word importance, of voting in this November election, the midterms. I and uh, We talked about this earlier this morning. I told you that I, th- I think, in my own opinion, not only in the state of Idaho, but across the board, the entire United States, this midterm is the most important midterm ever. What are your thoughts? I think it is, uh, certainly, I think on a national level, you know, as I, I said uh, in the politics of the uh, presidential election, I thought it was one of the most important elections in history, if for no other reason than the determination of our Supreme Court justices. But in terms of midterm elections, this is a big one. And what's also big for Idaho is you are seeing, folks, you're seeing major, major liberal outside money being poured into the state of Idaho to energize a new kind of voter or a uh, a voter that hasn't got off the couch for a while to come out and support very liberal candidates. So if you can make every effort to get to the polls, again, I don't want to tell you how to vote. I'm asking you to be informed. Um, These folks can be very, it can be very glossy, it can be very attractive, but at the end of the day, you know, we need to remember what's good for the Idaho family, what's good for our communities, and what has built the success that we are seeing here in Idaho. Not one thing has been accomplished in the state of Idaho without the support of the conservative Republicans that are in the state house. That's a fact. So, uh, you know, I hope that uh, I'm doing a good job for my constituents. I hope I am. I'm trying to. If you have a concern, please call me. Call me at home. Call me on my cell phone, whatever you need to do. Uh, 208-431-5863. I'm happy to answer your questions and happy to serve. Kelly, before you go, one final thought, and I don't know if it's fair to categorize uh, the wants and needs of Idaho, but as you look forward to the next uh, legislative session, what do you think will be the top two things and issues that have to be addressed? That will be addressed... uh, you know, I think we're going to have a continued conversation about taxes. The state is doing so well that we've got to keep talking about taxes, savings, and then, of course, what's very important to me is making sure that our roads and our infrastructure are paid for properly. With the growth, growth that we see, uh, we're going to have to think about the needs of our infrastructure going forward, particularly roads. Absolutely. And, and it's so important for agriculture. So important.
important that we have good roads to get our, our crops to market. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a caller with a quick question. I've got 30 seconds. Caller, real fast. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, I appreciate Senator Antone's appreciation of the rural area, and I hope he keeps it up. But, you know, if you go back in history, Zeb and Senator, you'll find that the Republicans are ruled for, ruled for about eight years, and then it seems to be the Democrats' turn. Well, this season, the Democrats are trying to get ahead of us, and that's not fair. <laughs> what are your comments on that? All right, quickly, Kelly, respond if you would. Real quick, Deb, you know, Idaho seems to be, in my opinion, kind of a, a, a lighthouse. I think what you're saying is true. There seems to be a back and forth in a lot of these states. I will tell you that it's been quite a while in Idaho since the Democrats have gotten too much of a foothold. And, and let me say this to my Democrat friends that are listening. Hey, uh, it was a different time. There was a different time in Idaho. And, there, and I, there are people who are listening today who identify as a Democrat who know that their values have been abandoned by their party. Absolutely. That the Idaho values that they voted at, with as an Idaho Democrat are not the ones the party espouses today. Absolutely. If you don't believe me, look at the Democrat platform. Absolutely. The Democrat platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Senator Kelly Anthon, a dear friend of this program and doing a great job for the state of Idaho, thank you for being on the program this morning. Thanks, Deb. God bless you. Thanks to all your listeners. Uh, thank you, sir. I always enjoy the informative uh, banter back and forth with Kelly. Thank you very much, Senator Kelly Anthon. Don't forget life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, and employee benefits. All of this and much, much more for you, your family, and your business at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. The number to call, the number to make an appointment, and the number to help you is 436. 436- 4424. Dedicated and devoted to serving you, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. 436 4424. Right now, we're going to send it back over to Wheels at our main station for, of course, the news from CBS. I'll be back in about th- uh, seven minutes. Don't go away. Oh, do you listen ever to that uh, opening theme and uh, that piano player? Woo! I mean, really tickling the ivories there. Sounds good. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best, the best of tires for your cars, pickups, and SUVs. And don't forget, too, uh, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Re. Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Always helping you get back to being you. I have looked forward to this interview with this gentleman uh, all this week and uh, really interested in finding out not only more about his thoughts, but also his book. He is the author of The Boy Crisis. Why Our Boys Are Struggling and What We Can Do About It, Dr. Warren Farrell. Dr. Farrell, good morning and welcome to the program. He's on the phone for you, sir. Uh, Dr. Farrell, good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you. I just enjoyed a wonderful time in Sun Valley a few weeks ago and um, uh, my wife and I spent a, a week there. Well, it's nice to have you as a visitor to our state of Idaho. I am really interested in uh, some of your concepts and thoughts this morning as to what's going on with our young men and boys in our society. But first and foremost, uh, the book, The Boy Crisis, Why Our Boys Are Struggling and What We Can Do About It. Give me kind of a thumbnail sketch as to what people will find in the book. Yes, first, um, why they're struggling and what they can do, we can do about it is I, I looked all over the world and found that there was a, in developed nations, there is a boy crisis in the 63 largest developed nations, uh, boys falling significantly behind girls in almost all academic areas, including math and science, which boys used to be significantly ahead in, but more importantly, reading and writing, where, which are the two biggest predictors of success. 
Um, and then I started looking at what, what do these developed nations have in common, and what they had in common were two things. One was permission for divorce, and among, the, and among people who were divorced, there was um, a, a significant amount that did not have father involvement. And among the boys, and particularly the boys, but also the girls that did not have father involvement, uh, there were the, these were the boys that tended to not have their testosterone uh, channeled constructively and therefore tended to have it channeled destructively. The second big issue in developed nations was that there, were, um, there was a lot more permission for women to have children without being married. And many of these, some of these women never had a father involved to begin with, and uh, and those boys tended to have really major um, problems. Um, and then others who did have fathers involved, that is, they lived but were not married with a, to a father. Um, they uh, those boys. Um, the father tended to be minimally or not involved at all with those boys after two or three, after three or four years, and so and those boys tended to have significant problems. So basically, I found that the the boy crisis resides where fathers do not reside. Wow! Uh, you know, when you were talking, the image that came to my mind about sons and fathers was the opening to the old TV series Andy of Mayberry with Andy Griffith and Opie, his son, walking along a, a riverbank ready to go fishing. We've lost that in our society, haven't we? I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> but I, I think that analogy is fair that we've lost that, haven't we? We've lo- well, actually, we've lost a lot of it among those fathers who are not involved, and we have more of it among fathers that are involved. So boys, there's this, uh, what I'm seeing is that there is this huge gap between father-involved boys where the fathers are more expressive, more involved. By more expressive, I mean they're more likely to say, I love you. They're more likely to roughhouse. They're more likely to take them camping. Uh, they're more likely to teach them the lessons of life. They're more likely to turn a car trip into a, um, you know, a learning experience trip, usually with the mom, too, and with the other children. Um, and these boys are doing better than any other group of boys, if you define better as be having more emotional intelligence and being happier. Um, the, um, the other group of boys, though, the ones that have minimal or no father involvement, they're the ones that are almost too a, a boy, in other words, doing the mass shootings. For example, Elliot Rogers, Nicholas Cruz, Dylan Roof, uh, Stephen Paddock, and David Katz, who was just um, the one that did the um, shooting in Jacksonville uh, after the um, Madden games um you know he was his parents were divorced in 2005 when david was 11 and he lived with his mom during his entire teenage years and in the, and the relationship was extremely fraught as it often is between a father and mother when they live alone and there's a divorce and so one of the things i discovered is that boys um who don't have dad involvement um, do much worse than their sisters do both the sisters and the brothers do have problems but the brothers have significantly more problems their smaller amount of, um, boys uh, usually have fewer emotional um, skills to be able to handle some of the disruption in the family Dr. Farrell, let me ask you this, and basically it's not just asking a question, it's also kind of uh, making a statement. Over the last decade, myself personally, I think I have seen, and I don't like it, a minimization of the value of men in our society, the value of boys growing into strong leaders as men in our society. And it seems like this push is getting bigger and bigger with the hate men attitude in our society. Would you agree or disagree? I would 100% agree. Um, you see this in so many things. I, I just watched a, um, I, I talk about in, actually in the Boy Crisis book, uh, a, a slam poem that won uh, uh, the Hatch Award, which is an uh, award for creative um, poetry, slam poetry, and it went viral. And um, this, this boy named Royce Mann, who, um, who talked about the day he became a man. And he, the day he became a man, he said, was when he was walking on the street and a woman in front of him noticed that somebody was walking behind him. This is a 14-year-old boy, mind you. And the woman um, crossed the street 
street to the other side, and he realized that I um, didn't. I wanted to always remain a boy, like Peter Pan. I did not want to become a man. I did not want to become a man because I knew who I was. When that woman crossed the street, I knew that I was a uh, that what I was as a future man uh, was an attacker, mostly an attacker. Maybe a father, maybe a brother, but mostly an attacker. Now, can you imagine a boy in 14 years of age defining masculinity? only through potentially being a potential attacker and then the the shame that he is carrying around and this is a, a brilliant bright boy um and that is so many of the boys in last years of high school and going into college when they're learning in college the 26 states um have as the law uh, the affirmative consent law where a boy is um if he reaches out he asks a woman on a date and he reaches out and takes her hand um, without asking her and getting her permission to take her hand, he can, if the woman chooses, be accused of sexual assault. Um, and, you know, and so on the other hand, if he doesn't take her hand uh, and ask for permission, he may be accused of being a wimp or sort of the woman, the, you know, the woman is sort of saying like, you know, do you really need to ask for my permission? I remember it myself when I asked uh, uh, in college a woman for permission to park with her. She, she looked back at me and she said, you don't ask me for permission, you park. If I don't want to park, I'll let you know. <laughs> that type of thing is, you know, and so boys, you know, if they, if they if they ask for if they don't ask for permission, they're um, they're in a, in, a, in a tough spot. And if they do ask for permission, um, or and especially if they put that permission in writing to protect themselves um, from future accusations of being assaulted, uh, you can, they're thought of as a wimp. And so it's um, we 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 treat sex in this culture as dirty. But then we say to our 14, 15 year old sons, you're responsible for initiating the dirt. The girl has the option, but you have the expectation. And that creates a great deal of shame, especially when, you know, the hashtag Me Too movement is only looking at the female perspective on the male-female tango, not the male perspective on that tango. You know, Dr. Farrell, we could go on for a long time on this this morning, but I, I've got a limited amount of time, and I want to ask you the following. I, I see our society completely removed from what I thought was goodness years ago. And when I say that, I mean like the covers of the Saturday Evening Post, painted by Norman Rockwell, of mom and dad going to church with the kids, dad working on the car with the son, mom uh, sewing with the daughter, the whole family sitting down at a Thanksgiving dinner and praying. We've got away from that, and I think we've got away from the characters of what people should and ought to be to be productive members of society. I know I ran it on, but do you agree or disagree? I 100% agree. And, you know, I didn't come from this perspective. I was on the board of directors of the National Organization for Women in New York City. I made all my income from speaking on, you know, the importance of women being free to do what they wish to do and so on. Um, but, you know, when uh, I was on that board and there was a, 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 a requ- and they were getting so many requests to not have for, for women to be able to have freedom to have children when they weren't married and to be the ones to say what was best for the children after divorce. And I only, and then I started looking at the outcome of the, of these children. And I said to the board of now, I said, the, the, our issue here should be what's best for children, not what, not what's best for men, what's best for women. And so I lost millions of dollars taking that stance, but, um, there, you know, but it felt to me like the right stance to take. And the more, the more the data comes in over the, you know, over the last 20, 30 years, um, in the, uh, I, I identify in the boy crisis book um, more than 70 different ways that children benefit from father involvement or they suffer from lack of father involvement. These are true mostly for girls as well, but more uh, intensely true for boys. I think that listening to you, I think you'll agree with this next uh, question and statement, that when you hear and read about the wussiness, the weak need, milk toast attitude of our millennial generation to where they have to have crying rooms and they have to have soft toys to hold on to because they're all stressed out, or in the case of Florida State University, they create stress classes, but then they found out some of the students couldn't go to the stress classes because they were too stressed out. What kind of wussies are we raising? 
Well, just statistic. First of all, you're right. And secondly, statistically speaking, when you protect children from stress, you stress them out more. Um, and now, obviously, if you overexpose them to stress, that creates a, a stress as well. But children have to learn how to deal with stress in order to not be stressed out. And unfortunately, as you're saying, the universities have become sort of the um, in loco parentis. You know, they, they, they have they become the, we, we protect the boys and the girls growing up, and we particularly protect girls by saying things like, you know, if, a, if any boy comes on to you and you, you don't uh, like it, um, you know, you can sue him as opposed to you can talk with him and tell him you don't like it, or you can talk to somebody at, at your high school or college and ask them to mediate the, um, the, you know, the, the experience. Um, we're, by this overprotection um, of our children from stress, we now have clear data that these are the children who are most stressed. I hope that there is a chapter in your book that tells us and shows us how to turn this around. Because quite frankly, right now, I think the wussiness in this uh, society is like a bowling ball going down the gutter. It's not going to hit anything. Yes, it's really, uh, there's, there are more than a hundred specific suggestions in the book about how to turn this around, including things like how to structure family dinner nights so that they don't become family dinner nightmares, how to make sure your children don't bring electronics to the table, what, you know, what, are, the, what are the dynamics that need to be undone to make sure that the parents are in charge of the children rather than the children are in charge of the parents. What, um, there's a lot of studies on the, the, the value of Cub Scouts and getting your kids involved and your boys involved in Cub Scouts and the character development that that creates, the value of Boy Scouts, the value of faith-based communities, and particularly faith-based communities where a good male pastor, um, priest, or rabbi gets together other boys to talk about their issues rather than the boys repressing their issues. Um, so that, um, I, I'm a really huge believer in solutions. I rarely talk about any problem um, without having a solution um, uh, coupled with it. Would you agree with me, and I don't know the status of your faith and belief, I am a Christian, I'm proud of it. I honestly think that we have got so far removed from the principles of the Bible in our family situations, education, and our business world, that's a major part of the problem. We'd better return to what the good book says and what the Lord commands. Yes, the principles of the Bible and the characters, uh, the, you know, the, the, m almost everything that the Bible says is really what we need for character development. My wife is a born-again Christian. I am not. But she and I got married because we have the same values. Um, and so, uh, and so if, you're, if you're a Christian, that is really helpful. Um, but if you um, are not a Christian... Um, uh, parse the values that are in Christianity and imparted by Christianity and make sure your partner has those values. Let me ask you, I've only got about four or five minutes left here, but I want to get into this segment. I think some of the biggest culprits of turning our society into a bunch of wussies uh, that would be the education system and also the media. How can we correct these problems? It's the education system, the media, and, all, and single moms. Single moms are wonderful at nurturing and, um, and protecting children, but um, when it's not balanced by um, dads, there, there's what I call mom-style parenting and dad-style parenting, and they're very much in tension with each other, and they're really meant to be in tension with each other. The children that do the best are ones that have fathers that are involved and mothers that are involved and the mother and the father work through the tension so for example a mom will um, mom and dad will typically both say to their children you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas and the children will of course test the boundaries and um, and but the mom's response will tend to be different in terms of enforcing boundaries and the mom will sort of feel like oh the child my son or daughter has had a you know challenging day, so I shouldn't get into a big argument over a few peas. I'll tell you what, sweetie, have a couple more peas, and then you can have your ice cream. Dads tend to look at the, the ch child and say, "Excuse me, we have a deal here. You can um, you can 
finish your peas and have your ice cream, or you can not finish your peas and not have your ice cream. And so the um, and so the child learns with the mother that usually she or he can manipulate a better deal. And so if the mother is sensitive or responsive to uh, the child not doing well in school or having a fight or being bullied, uh, then that the child can use that victim approach um, to be able to get the ice cream sooner. But the father does not allow, is much more likely to not allow that uh, manipulation and therefore the father uh, um, forces the child to have to focus on the task at hand, doing what it has to do, finish the peas, in order to get the ice cream. The result of that is that when fathers are the primary parent and mothers are the primary parent, the fathers as, as the primary parent, only 15% of the boys have ADHD. With mothers as the primary parent, more than 30% of the boys have ADHD. So you can, um, because the, uh, the attention is not required to be focused on doing what you have to do. So the children with ADHD have much less postponed gratification, and postponed gratification is the single most important quality uh, that predicts success. Dr. Farrell, when you watch the television at night or read the newspaper in the morning, what are your thoughts about the millennial generation, all of whom are not negative? There are many that are very successful, many that are education-oriented, and many that are business-oriented. But when you watch the TV and you see these young punks and thugs trying to create mayhem and chaos. What are your thoughts about the younger generation, and how can we possibly right the ship? Yes, usually, first of all, very deeply, there, there's two things happening in the younger generation. There are th these extraordinary boys and girls who are, you know, <laughs> who make me feel like I was a loser compared to them at their age, that have enormous amounts of maturity and sophistication and and almost a type of wisdom, especially for their age. And then there's this other group that fit exactly the type of profile you just were talking about. And one of the things, so I, you know, when I started to do the research on the boy crisis, I wanted to find out what's creating this difference. And there are about 10 basic causes of the boy crisis, but the number one cause I did find out was, was the minimal or no father involvement and, their, and, and or you know, a family that was not together. And certainly, um, you know, certainly Christianity helps keep a family together. Wow. wow. This book sounds like it is a home run. Tell us a little bit about where people can find the book, The Boy Crisis, Why Our Boys Are Struggling, and what we can do about it. The least expensive way is with Amazon, <laughs> sort of almost laughably. And, um, and certainly on my website, warrenfarrell.com. Warren, W-A-R-R-E-N, and then Farrell, S is in Frank, A-R-R-E-L-L dot com. Uh, we'll give you a lot more information about it. Um, but also just the Amazon site does give you a fair amount of information about it. One last thought on this book and your writing of it. While you were writing this book and obtaining the research material, etc., what did you learn about our society and what hopes and or fears do you look at in the future? Fears that I have are that when we're not paying, when we're, I love the fact that we have we have devoted a half a century to really um, expanding the options for girls. That I think is terrific, and I'm glad that I was part of that process. I am deeply sad about the fact that we've demonized men and um, and uh, and undervalued the family. Um, and I see a huge difference. Um, and, and every society that has done this uh, with with so much permission for divorce and not having and uh, minimal amount of involvement with the family, all 63 nations that have moved in that direction um, have their boys doing significantly worse. And 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 one of the, the deepest sadnesses is, is that. Boys who hurt hurt us. Uh, this is the common denominator behind all the mass shootings, boys with minimal or no father involvement. It was the common denominator behind David Cass's parents who divorced in 2005 when David was 11. He was the, school sh he was the um, shooter um, in Jacksonville a couple of days ago. And it, it's the um, background behind Elliot Rogers of Santa Barbara and Nicholas Cruz at Parkland and Dylan Roof who did that mass church shooting and Stephen Paddock in Las, Las Vegas. And so... It, and it's also the common denominator of almost all of 
of the ISIS uh, recruits, including the female ISIS recruits. And so the cost to society, uh, if you calculate the cost to society, which I did in the Boy Crisis book, um, I did, uh, it's more than a trillion dollars per year wow. paying for the, for the non-intact, the price of the non-intact families and the price of lack of father involvement. And as I said, there are other reasons as well. But if you, if you look at the cost of ISIS, both psychologically and financially, and look at the cost of um, boys who are unemployed, who become tax um, uh, siphons rather than tax um, creators, um, and who are ashamed of themselves, and girls who are not interested in marrying boys who are unemployed, relatively small number of girls look on the unemployment line for boys to marry. And so um, this, these are so many psychological family and just plain um, the price of um, keeping um, men in prison who um, tend to um, commit crimes when they don't have father involvement. These are the prices we're paying. The book is called The Boy Crisis, Why Our Boys Are Struggling and What We Can Do About It. The author is a great gentleman, Dr. Warren Farrell. Sir, I hope you'll uh, consent to coming back on in the future. It would be my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Excellent guest, Dr. Warren Farrell, and I thank him very much. By the way, I'm going to send it over to the main studio in just a second. I want to remind everybody about Dino Septic Service. Oh, they have recently expanded to better serve you, your community, your business, your home, and all of Magic Valley. Uh, septic tanks need pumping? Call them. Backhoe service? Call them. Water and sewer lines installed? Call them. Liquid waste removal? Call them. Yes, call them. Fast, fair, friendly service. In Rupert, 436-6526. In Burley, 678-1638. Dino Septic Service with a big truck that says, Smells Cargo, on the way. You call them today. We'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much, and don't forget, coming up on September 8th, a great big production sale at Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, the 30th annual production sale. I mean, we're talking good, good horses, confirmation, disposition, performance. These horses raised in the rocks, and they know where to put their feet, and they are good, solid confirmation horses with an abundance of color. Don't forget Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 30th annual production sales, September 8th. Preview at 10, sale at 11, right up at the ranch at 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley. You be there. I've had a lot of people on this. Yes, go ahead. I was just going to say that I tried calling Dr. Lamero with the number you had given me, but it just goes straight to voicemail. Um, oh, goody. Um, the number uh, I gave you was 970-232-9578, was it not? Yes, sir. Okay, keep trying that number, and then we, in turn, will try to find another number for you. Keep trying that, if you would, please. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Dr. Gerard Lamaro is uh, scheduled to be on our program, and if I could ask my lovely bride to come in uh, the studio real quick, and we will try to figure out how come we can't find him. And uh, we will do our best in just a moment to get him on the air. And another very interesting topic with a good friend of ours, and uh, he has written a couple of books called uh, More Great News for America. America, and it's the dawning of the new conservative era, and also uh, how and why the good guys win in the end. Dan, if you could hand me that uh, book over there on my desk, and we will see if we can't get another number for wheels to call and find out. And uh, we're doing this all ad lib on the air, folks, so bear with me just a few minutes, because we've got to get a hold of this guest. I know he is ready, and uh, wheels, are you ready to take an another number yes sir all right try nine seven zero two three two nine five one eight 
Okay. All right. Give me a minute, and I will have talk again tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Wheels. Appreciate it, buddy. And uh, I think everything is okay for Dr. Lomero. He's probably waiting for us and listening to us on the uh, Internet. But uh, in the interim, if you want to call me and give me a call, I'd sure appreciate it. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I do have a couple of public service announcements I had to get in this morning, and I uh, need to tell these people I'm sorry that I didn't get them on earlier, and I'm reaching over here on my desk right now trying to find some of those. There will be no worship service at the Rupert United Methodist Church this coming Sunday, September 2nd, but there will be worship service at the Paul United Methodist Church at 9 o'clock, so you can make plans of not being at one, but going to the other. I just want to pass that along with you. And uh, then also so George, my buddy George, what did I do with his papers? I've got it right here. Uh, George Mass is in charge of putting on the third annual Patriotic Car Show, standing for the red, white, and blue. It's going to be on Fremont Street in Rupert, and of course they're going to have all the fancy, fancy bikes and boats and cars, lots of entertainment vendors, and of course good food. That's going to be from 10 to 4 on September 8th. Don't you miss it. And for more information, come Contact George at 208-650-0104. Wheels, did we get Dr. Lomero? Yes, sir. He's on the phone for us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gerard Lomero, a dear friend of this program with a brand new book called More Great News for America. And I love the subheadline, How and Why the Good Guys Win in the End. It sounds like a Hopalong Cassidy TV show on Saturday morning. Well, thank you, and I do think the good guys are going to win. You know, what kind of position and shape do you think, personally, from your studies of politics over the many years, where are we right now in the United States? I I think we're kind of like with our boot heels on the edge of the cliff, and somebody could come along and back us into the canyon if we don't start taking offensive methods and not play defense anymore, but go on offense and try to take back the value system of America. Do you think I'm right or wrong? I think both. <clears throat> you know, I think you're right <clears throat> in analyzing the, the depth of the problem, but I also think that, um, in a sense, uh, it's not as bad as it sounds. I mean, I grant you all the bad things that are going on. I grant you all the bad people who are working against this country, the media and others, but I think the American people have a lot of common sense, are very strong, very tough, they don't get mad fast, and they don't take action fast. You know, I mean, it takes it takes something to, to get the tiger going. But I'll tell you, the tiger is going. There are people around the country who are swinging into action left and right. I talk to people all across the country. There are wonderful Americans who are working hard uh, to fix the problems, and uh, they're getting tougher all the time because they know the opposition is trying. And my analysis is the Democrats, the leftists, the radicals, and all those folks are on their last gas. They're literally on their last gas. They're being desperate in their attempts uh, to keep this country from what it once was and to take it in a new direction toward European socialism. But the American people don't want it, and they are fighting back, and they're getting tougher and more fight in them every day. In my opinion, Dr. Lomero, and you've been such a good friend of this program, and we've visited privately on the telephone, but there are three subject matters that I think need to be enhanced again in the American lifestyle in order for the American public to regain its values and its morality. They are church, family, and education. What are your thoughts? Exactly right, and you know what? Those are the very things that the left has attacked. They have attacked the church, they've attacked the family, uh, and they have attacked education. And I think there is what I call a conservative 
renaissance taking place. It's, it's in the early stages, but people are fed up with their kids going to college and not being able to be free to talk. They are fed up with the family being attacked. And it's because it's the greatest institution in the world. The family is a wonderful institution, and most people know it, but the leftists want to attack it. So I think your three points are exactly correct. And I think that the American people are fighting back. And I think we are moving into a conservative era where they are fighting all those, those um, attacks on those key institutions. They're the institutions, really, that are the foundation of America and of freedom. And the American people don't want to lose them. Let me so ask you're right, and the American people are on your side. Dr. Lomero, there are so many insidious things going on, not only with our kids, but also our adults today. Social media and, and the media in general, nobody knows who to trust. Nobody knows who to believe. We've got an FBI where the hierarchy seems to be out of control. We've got politicians that say and do things that are completely uh, illegal and or a lie. Uh, is our society almost at the tipping point, and you think that there's enough good people to turn this thing around? Yes, I do think there are enough good people. And by the way, the reason for the DOJ and the FBI doing illegal things is because they got taken over by the leftists. I mean, it, let's face it, this happened under the Obama administration, a bunch of leftists that he put into key jobs, just like the IRS is another institution that was weaponized for their political leftist ideology to turn this country into socialist country. And that's why the people uh, aren't following the law, because the socialists don't follow the law. They're dictators. And if they're not dictators, they're trying to get to be dictators. But all of that can be cleaned up. I know Trump it seems like he's been slow because he's trying to follow the law as doing it. And once this election is over, I think he's going to take the gloves off. He's going to make all the stuff that they've been hiding and redacting and classifying, he's going to make it public because there's no reason to hide what those uh, leftists did in the DOJ and the FBI. Twenty-five of them have lost their jobs, been demoted, been fired, or quit. Twenty-five at the top, that's pretty big. And they're going to be more. And then next year, I think they're going to face justice because I think these people went overboard. It looks like they broke the law trying to get Clinton off the hook for what she did wrong and trying to get Trump in trouble and get rid of them because they didn't want them because they don't want a, a pro-conservative, pro-Trump uh, type of person in office who's going to fight for this country. They don't want that. They want a European socialist dictator. You mentioned the word a couple of occasions in your last uh, little bit on the program, and the word is socialism or socialistic values, etc. Did you ever think that America, a bastion of freedom for the entire world, we'd have the, the impetus of having possibly politicians jump on the bandwagon and promote socialism, and there would be listeners and people that would vote for that? I mean, I'm shocked that we are in the position we're in today. Socialism seems to be almost the forefront of the Democratic Party today. It is, absolutely. They've taken over the Democrat Party for all intents and purposes, and even the ones who are not officially socialist, uh, they're pretending to be something else, but they're really socialists because they want the government running everything. They want a government health care. That, that's single-payer health care socialism. They want programs that are socialist, no question about it, and they want power. Uh, did I ever think it would happen? No. However... We do know communism, socialism, Marxism, very insidious. And by the way, in 2010, my first book uh, that I got published was America's Economic War, and I wrote about the war between capitalism and socialism. And I wrote about how the cultural war was nothing more than a war between socialism and capitalism. And that was between big government control versus freedom. And, and I'll tell you, 
that book is, is true today, too. The same war is going on, except we don't call it a cultural war. Now it's turned into a political war, but it's the same thing. Because first you start with the culture and you try to change it, if you want to change this country, and they do. Then you change the politics. You also try to change the religion. That's part of the culture. And you try to change the economy where the government runs everything. Well, fortunately, we've got a president now who's deregulating, cutting the taxes, doing all the right things. And by the way, Trump is doing a great job of undoing a lot of this socialism that Obama was pushing. Let me ask you this. In your recent blog, to which I really was appreciative that I got a copy of it uh, yesterday, uh, you had as the headline, Is Social Media a New Threat? To freedom of speech. I would answer unequivocally that yes, it is. I'd like you to define that a little bit and how. Now that we're in the lion's mouth with social media, how can we back off and try to write uh, the course that we're on? Well, first, uh, I'll answer. You've got two big questions there. The first question is well, what is it all about? And this social media, we're talking about Twitter, Facebook. LinkedIn, all these these big social media companies, YouTube, Google, uh, millions, billions of people around the world are using them. And they are a centralized source of information. And, of course, the leftist, socialist, radicals, they want to control those social media because then they control people's ideas. It's, it's like a form of, of uh, propaganda. And, and unfortunately... I think uh, a lot of these companies have a lot of uh, socialist thinking in there, and they, they're doing things. For example, Twitter is doing shadow banning. Shadow banning is somebody tweets out an article or something, and then uh, it doesn't get sent to their followers. It gets banned. They, they figure out, oh, this is conservative. In fact, I know somebody, a uh, nice lady in Pittsburgh. I don't know her personally. I just know her writing. And she wrote an article that was pro-Trump recently, and apparently Facebook deleted it. Why? Because some liberal said it was a, a, a not-so-nice piece, and so they deleted it. Well, she had a fight to get it back in there because it was pro-Trump. And the only reason the, the, the leftists didn't like it is because it was pro-Trump, and so they try to censor it. So we're talking with the social media about all types of censorship, and, and doing things uh, to keep conservatives and conservative thought off the social media. And the second question you ask is, what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to take action, because I know Trump is investigating it and his team. But think of it this way. Maybe you have a Verizon phone. Maybe you have AT&T. Maybe you've got some other company that gives you phone service. But can you imagine... That is a monopoly-type service. If you want to telephone your friends and relatives and companies and businesses, you have to have access to a phone. It's a monopoly service. And can you imagine if Verizon said, oh, you're conservative, Zeb, Mr. Bell, we're not going to allow you to use the phone because you're, you're going to say conservative things on the phone. Well, we would be outraged. Well, this social media is another type of monopoly service. I mean, everybody looks up, you know, where to go find a pizza or, or whatever they want to look up on Google. And uh, it's not fair to say that uh, if you happen to say something conservative, that they're not going to allow you to get the answer you want. If you say, oh, give me a conservative article on the economy, and they won't give it to you, that's just not fair. So I think this may have to turn into a monopoly where it's regulated and no one is allowed to discriminate based on race, creed, sex, or political opinion. Let me ask you this question, and I'm down to a few minutes left in this segment, unfortunately, Dr. Lomero. But our education system, whether it's through the elementary, high school, uh, college, uh, university level, whatever, these kids are facing a very tough task of trying to get equal and fairness of uh, thought at the education level. It seems to be a liberal leftist doctrine. How can we clean this up? Several ways. Uh, one, uh, believe it or not, homeschooling has done a great job uh, 
for the parents who have the time, energy, and inclination to, to teach their kids at home. That's been a great solution. But beyond that, conservatives are starting around the country to run for school boards. And when they get in control of the schools by being on the school boards, they can change the textbooks, they can change the philosophy, they can change what's taught. Some of the school districts around the country are saying you have to teach a, uh, um, a car course or class on uh, government and how our government works in a free country and what our Constitution teaches, what are the freedoms in the Bill of Rights. So some places are demanding that. At the college, university level, it's a little different problem, but what's happening there are trustees are getting letters from unhappy parents about what's not being allowed, that free speech is not allowed on campuses. There's a ridiculous story in, in Utah where some teacher, some uh, graduate teaching assistant put a little box and said that's the the zone where anybody who has a, a weapon can, can sit during class, and it's like three feet by three feet, a little box. Because in Utah, you're allowed to have concealed carry, even on, on campuses. And, and so they had this little box for people that want to, you know, follow the Second Amendment. Well, the answer is the rules are changing uh, slowly in some places, quicker in other places, but basically the alumni, the trustees, and the parents are, are taking issue with these radical professors and administrators. Doctor, I want to just end this segment by saying this, that your new book, More, Great News for America, The Dawning of the New Conservative Era, it's an easy read because you basically point out the issue and then you come up with the uh, dynamics of the answers after that. I urge everyone to get a copy of this book. Where? Where can they obtain it, Dr. Lomero? Well, you can buy any of my books on Amazon. You can get them in print or in Kindle if you like those electronic devices for reading books. They can also go to my website, greatnewsforamerica.com, greatnewsforamerica.com. And there's links that will get you to buy the books, too, on the website. Uh, but Amazon is where most people, I think, buy books these days, so that's a good place to start. You can also visit your bookstore, but they may not have it in their, you know, the, the bestseller list or something, because they usually just have a few, a few books in most bookstores. I want to urge everybody to please find the book written by a friend of this program, Dr. Gerard Lomero, and uh, I just absolutely thank him for taking the time to come on the program this morning, and I'm going to have him back in the not-too-distant future. Sir, God bless, and thank you for all you do. God bless you, and God bless all your listeners, and God bless America. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's an excellent book, and for those that want more information about this book or his books in general, please get a hold of me, and I can give you all the information necessary. Excellent job. Holy moly, Wheel says we got a lot of ground to cover, and we're headed for the cliff if I don't hurry up and get the weather forecast on here. Uh, brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324 seven six five seven or you can go to their website scarrowsmeats.com absolutely all the delicious meats and don't forget still time for a lot of outdoor barbecuing they've got the best mm, delicious scarrows meats right now here's gina with the weather it's going to be another beautiful day as we are into the final week of August, heading into the Labor Day weekend. Beautiful is what we're expecting. Sunny sky, slightly breezy winds out of the east, right around 8 miles an hour, becoming west-southwest by this afternoon, expecting a high of 81 tonight. Beautiful skies, mostly clear, low of 53 tomorrow. Sunny with a high near 82. Winds are going to be picking up tomorrow. Could gust as high as 25 miles an hour. Mostly clear for tomorrow night with a low of 50. By Friday, sunny and 76. Saturday, sunny and 80. Looks like we're going to see 80 degrees for Sunday and also for Labor Day Monday. That's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. And thank you. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the rest of the crew serving you at 331 North Road. Jerome, don't forget they are changing the way we eat. One one delicious bite at a time. 
want to also give a big thank you and shout out to our major sponsor of this radio program. Absolutely the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. If you still got time for a summer road trip, take it. But before you go, make sure you stop in to check out all the tires you may need for your car, pickup, SUV, trailers, etc. They've got the best. All the sizes, all the tread designs for you. And don't forget, too, the very best in brake service with highly trained brake technicians, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Batteries, very important. You be sure and stop by and see one of the seven locations today so you can drive away on your road trip and feel comfortable. Absolutely stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Up, that's true, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Got a big day tomorrow. Yes, we're going to have Megan Barth on from Las Vegas. She always does a great job. We've got Open Forum. We're going to have Rita Ramsey. All of this and more right here on Zebeth Ranch for the Thursday edition starting at 8.06 tomorrow morning. We'll ride the horse for three hours right here on K Bar, 12.30 a.m. And streaming live on the internet, zebbell.com, where we always say at the end of the program, the way things were or the way things ought to be, And the world needs more cowboys. See you tomorrow morning.